Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Play Total Annihilation. I am your host, Nerus, and this is Core Mission 4. And I definitely have not played this mission before. In fact, I have no idea what is happening in this mission. I certainly did not play this mission earlier and completely fail at it entirely. That's why I don't know that there is a great big laser death tower right up there that is just waiting for me to poke my nose out and aggro a whole bunch of enemy units that will come charging down and murder my face off. I don't know any of this because I absolutely did not. None of this happened. It, it didn't occur. Moving on. We have access to a new core unit for this mission, the Pyro. We also have access to a few others, I believe, and we'll get to them. Or maybe we don't. I don't know. We'll find out. It will be a moment of discovery for us all. The Pyro is the core equivalent of the Zeus. Unlike the Zeus, which is slow, heavily armored, and generally... slow, the Pyro is fast, lightly armored, and sets things on fire. And that fire does quite a lot of damage. Do not underestimate that fire. Pyros are excellent hit and run units. If you can get a half a dozen pyros into someone's base, you can tear their resource production apart in seconds. It is truly a wondrous thing to behold. Now, this is probably going to take a while. Can I? Oh, yes, I can. But uh, note that I have increased the game speed to plus 10. This will make things go faster, which will thus reduce the base time, base construction time, because this part is kind of boring. I'm afraid I have to turtle a bit on this map because the instant I poke my nose out there, a shit ton of dudes are going to come pouring down. Here's a bunch of dudes now. Very silly. And you may have just briefly seen a flash of a flash up there, which the arrival of which certainly did not prompt me to restart this uh, mission because I didn't fail. Um, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to implement a couple... Actually, I'm not going to implement that, but I'm going to type this command in, which I think is the right one. No. Nope, I, maybe it doesn't work in single player. I don't actually know if it does or not. Right. Now I can build some light laser towers. Laser, you fucking Rockos. Bastards. Oh, eat laser flashes. Ha 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 ha. Oh god, no. I don't want my commander to eat laser. Ah. We have access to a few new buildings. I'm going to bring the game speed back down to normal. And I'm going to build this. This is a geothermal power plant. It is effectively the Tech 1.5 power generator. You may have noticed these thermal vents you know, on Core Prime. They're these great big uh, venty things. On other places, they're these little holes which have steam pouring out of them. You can use a construction K-Bot, or a any Tech 1 construction unit, except for the commander, to build a geothermal power plant on one of these vents. Geothermal power plants can only be built on these vents, but 
they produce 250 energy, which is a hell of a lot compared to the 20 energy you get out of a solar collector. So it's well worth doing. This, uh, I'll skip over that for now, and I'll introduce you to this guy here, the Gat Gun. Eight, two A's, Gat Gun. The Gat Gun is the core heavy laser tower. Heavy laser towers are like light laser towers, but heavier. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. However, when it's finished and I have it fire on something, you will see what I mean by heavier. The other new building we have is another, also a defense building, and that is the Pulverizer Missile Tower. The arm version of this is... Oh, we've got some peewees shooting at my, our Q-Bot lab. Those sneaky little buggers. Right, anyway. Pulverizer is a missile tower. The arm one is called the Defender. Missile towers are dirt cheap and fire homing missiles, anti-air missiles. They're, primary in, they're primarily intended for... Yeah, there goes the Gat Gun. Uh, they're prim anyway, um, missile towers are originally intended for anti-air uh, work, but because they're so cheap and you can build so many of them so quickly, and they actually do reasonable damage to land units, they're actually somewhat of an all-purpose defense structure. In general, in multiplayer, you'll see people just build huge numbers of these big blobs all over the place to protect themselves both from enemy aircraft and from enemy everything else. The Gat Gun, as you saw, makes a much more satisfying laser noise than the light laser tower, and fires slower and also fires these green bolts of lasers. They do... oh. I guess I can't hit allies with it. They do a lot of damage. Let's just leave it at that, shall we? And finally, my construction K-Bot is going to begin build is building an advanced K-Bot lab. This will give me access to advanced K-Bots, as I believe I eventually demonstrated in Arm Mission 4 after realizing that it was in fact possible. Those peewees really want a piece of me. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to turn the game speed up a bit because it's going a bit slow. And yes, as you can see, we can only build pyros. You know what? I'm going to build a shit ton of pyros because pyros are pretty awesome. I'm also going to break out the vehicle plant, just to see if there are any new vehicles for this mission. I don't believe there are, but you never know. That peewee has apparently finally managed to get a bead. Unfortunately for it, if it can shoot my keyboard lab, my, my pulverizers can shoot it. Bye bye peewee. and have my commander assist pyro production. As that's probably a faster way to get to pyros than uh, trying to build As assisting is probably a faster way to get pyros than uh, Ooh. Oh, it doesn't work in single player. What a pity. Uh, that is that command is a command you can type in multiplayer, which will allow you to select groups of units without having to hold down Alt. Very handy. I think there is a way to get it to work for single player as well, but I need to put it in as a command line or something. As
as you can see, a construction vehicle can't build the advanced vehicle plant. Because... fuck you. That's why. It seems to be why TA does most things, really. I'm thinking it might have been a good idea to have just moved my, walked command, my commander up here and built my base up here. There's nothing up there. Stupid useless. <laughs> oh well, at least I can pick up some more pyros on the way. Haha, <laughs> did you see that cat gun go? Oh, I love it. Ah, here's my light laser tower. It's picked up enough kills to be a veteran. As far as I'm aware, Units that become veterans shoot with more accuracy. This is I, this is how I believe it works. I'm not certain. Alright, now the pyro squads are going... Oh, the pyro squad is going to head up here. And I'm pretty much going to be using exclusively pyros for this mission because they are by far the best units to be using for this mission. It's too cramped for vehicles, and they're the only advanced unit we've got. So their the, their really high damage for a tier two unit is very much appreciated. So you watch this stuff. Look at this. Look at how fast they are toasting those those stuff beasts. Let's toast this LLT. Whoosh! Ha ha ha! Ah, Pyro's awesome. As you can see, if uh, left unattended, Pyro's can do a lot of damage very quickly. I'll build a gat gun up there, but and laughs. As you can see, the one downside to the pyro is their... they need to like get a line up on their target before they can fire. I think it's because they've got sort of a continual fire thing, so they're not very good at hitting moving targets, which is a bit of a pity. However, they tear through buildings so quickly. <laughs> oh, this might actually be a terrible idea. No, no I'm fine. <laughs> oh. Ah, there we go. There's the Defender. That's the armed version of the Polarizer. Oh god, they have a lot of dudes. Oh, they've got a lot of laser towers. Okay. So that happened. Uh, time for round two. And while I'm up here, I'm going to demonstrate a thing, an awesome, unique fact to Core Prime geothermal vents. Core Prime geothermal vents, unlike every other geothermal vent, take up a 3x3 three three space. Which means you can actually put up to four geothermal power plants on one geothermal vent in Core Prime. Core Prime is awesome. That's an thing at 12.5, and he's an thing at 20.8. So the commander is worth more than another K-Bot lab. <laughs> well, let's head up here again with our uh, second pyro force. Come on. Ah, there's the galactic gate. 
Now, if you remember in our Mission 4, I introduced the capturing mechanic and said that it would become very relevant. Well, this is where it becomes relevant. We can't destroy that galactic gate. We destroy it, we lose instantly. Bam, lose. What we have to do is we have to destroy everything around it, and then we have to bring our commander up and capture it. So, uh, up you come, commander. Everything should be dead by the time you get up here. I hope. If not, well, you'll be fine. Toast them, my pretties. <laughs> I've got myself a uh, cells a real sweet setup here. Hell of a defensive position. By the way, in... Oh, oh, Commander's under attack. What's he under attack by? Oh, he's under attack by my own pyros. Never mind. It is also worth noting that uh, this particular unique aspect of Core Prime Thermal Vents means that Core Prime Thermal Vents are worth an entire fusion reactor worth of power. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now I'm going to have the Commander begin capturing that. Well, the pyros scour the rest of the map for our mutants. Because, as is typical for core missions, one of the victory conditions is everything dies! So everything's gonna die. I have no idea why the pyros can walk on that surface, but alright. Your guess is as good as mine. As you can see, these light laser towers aren't firing anymore. That's because I've taken out the arm energy infrastructure. Light laser towers need energy to fire. Laser is made of energy. Shush, it's science magic. And as such, once I've taken out the arm energy infrastructure, all oh, their powerful light laser towers become impotent. And I think these... no, the hammers can still fire. Some units also require energy to fire, although it's fairly uncommon. I believe mobile artillery need energy to fire. I don't think I can get my pyros up there, so let's have them wander up here. Nope, oh, we've found a Jethro and a Stumpy. Murder them. Burn them. Burn them all! So yeah, this map, the rest of this map is pretty much just going to be cleaning up core, or cleaning up arm. As you can see, Galactic Gate is ours! It does absolutely nothing. The Galactic Gate is a completely... it, it does nothing. 